Yeah. Yeah. Every time when you install one of these kits, you need to follow the manufacturer's instructions. You've got to make sure everything complies to how the manufacturer tells us to install the system. Obviously, if we don't follow this, these guidelines, what will happen at that case, it won't comp their guarantee won't stand. So it's null and void. It's null and void. So when we install these systems, we've always got to follow, follow the manufacturer's specifications. King Span. Yep. This is a King Span, a span solar collector. What we're going to do, obviously, first and foremost, when we get onto site, we make sure all the kit comes from the plumb centre. We just check that we've got everything here on site so that when we start an installation, we can complete an installation. Components to the roof, we'll hoist it or winch it to the roof, at which point, obviously, it's safe, manual handling's all taken care right. of, and we've put that all in as risk assessment. Right, so we're going to fix these down the rafters now. Yeah? Yeah. Firstly, obviously, the bars come as they are there. No attachments to them, just your nuts and bolts. At no, that, <laughs> what at that? No attachment to them, just nuts and bolts. Okay, yes, <laughs> because we need to attach something to them so we can screw it to the roof. Okay. And so the only attachments would be nuts and bolts then? Yes. <laughs> yeah. so, so what happens then is to that bar, we'll connect, we'll connect these straps, which are what holds the solar panel into position on the roof. So if you can look at your screen, you can probably see this strap here goes underneath the, the tiles. It's very thin, but it's stainless steel, and then it's screwed to the rafter. And then what we do is we bring this tile, if you, if you stay with it, um, we bring this tile over the, the top, and then that tile goes down. So you can see that that is then watertight, and the, the bracket continues to come up, and it holds all this in, into position. Mark, just actually on top of them are a sort of clamp. Those will clamp the horizontal uh, components in shortly. Those come pre-assembled, uh, straight out of the box. Those are already attached. The straps that the guys referred to, the brackets, those are the only things which you simply use a pre-attached nut and bolt to attach directly onto the rails. Uh, and I think another big benefit of the system is that, uh, as Chris mentioned, the tile slides directly back on top of the straps. So as you look at these straps, the roof itself has not been drilled, at least the roof material. It's directly fitted onto the trusses. We do have other roof kits available, but this would typically be our, our most popular one because you know, it's peace of mind for the end customer that their roof does not have to be drilled for the roof kit itself. Yeah. Now, from the installer's point of view, one of the features with this particular product, the, the guys are only installing 10 tubes at the moment. We would normally install at least 20 or 30 tubes for a household. And the advantage is the exact same roof kit that the guys are currently fitting is what you would use for the 20 and 30 tubes as well. Right, so okay. You still just have the four brackets. So again, as the guys are saying, they're making it look easy, but it is exactly the same equipment. All you would do is space the vertical rails further apart for a 20 tube and the, the the short rails that you see there that are just over well Chris's shoulder width not mine uh, come <laughs> in the box with the manifold so that's how the the system is sized and what, um, what's the typical the standard warranty is five years but we run a accredited installer course so anyone who's uh, a trained and registered plumber can come on the course and you can actually offer a 20-year warranty so it's the longest warranty on a, a tube product on the market and uh, that's on the tube itself, thanks. Uh, so you see here the tube, just to explain what this is, it appears as though we've got a, a unit which is not insulated, but in fact it's completely the opposite. Uh, we're using a vacuum, which is the most natural uh, and really the best type of insulation that you can have. So we've got this little fin, this absorber plate, which absorbs the irradiation from the sun. It does convert this into heat energy, and it heats a pipe on the back with this particular unit. This contains a very small volume of uh, a liquid which boils at only 30 degrees. So at 30 degrees that liquid turns to a vapor, rises up inside the pipe and heats a condenser at the top. Just bear in mind that the blue surface is the active surface of the unit. And just a couple of other things to mention just at this end of the tube. You, you'll see that this end of the tube is completely uh, closed and sealed. So the liquid does not flow through this. This enables the installers to attach the tubes after a system is commissioned. And also, if, if they ever need to remove a tube, they don't need to drain the system. Two other benefits which are worth mentioning. This contains a temperature limiter, which protects the uh, collector achieving extremely high temperatures in stagnation conditions. So it's one of the ways that we protect the fluid and control the pressure in the system. And lastly, but most importantly, the seal that we have inside each 
every single evacuated tube that we manufacture is a hermetic metal to glass seal. And hopefully you can just see that <laughs> that allows us to suspend the copper away from the glass. And that stops the expansion of the copper damaging the glass, which is this hermetic seal is one of the reasons that we can offer the full 20 year warranty if it's installed correctly. Brilliant. OK, guys, back over to you. How are we doing? So how we slide these in the uh, manifold to so lift this lid off. And then we've got to ensure these go up here. Get these rubbers on. Right, are you going to push it, Stephen? Are you pushing it? There we go, we're in now. Make sure the rubber's over. Are we, are we running straight? It looks straight to me. So, Mark, once you start, do, do as how rough as I am. Presume these start to heat up as soon as you put them in, don't they? Or That's what right. In, let's say in direct sunlight, if you've got very strong direct sunlight, the tube will remain deceptively cold. That's because the heat, because of the vacuum, the heat cannot transfer from the absorber to the glass. However, the condenser at the top of the tube can get particularly hot. Hi, Mom. So you'll see just at the manifold that, that Chris is putting the, or guiding the condensers into the manifold. Those pockets are completely um, separate from the manifold in a sense. So the pockets receive the, the condenser, and as soon as that's installed, the system will heat up. And one of the traditional problems people have with uh, commissioning solar thermal systems is the fact that the units do start to heat up straight away, and that causes problems whenever you're commissioning the system. What you would really do is fill the system with the antifreeze and commission this particular unit and then go back on the roof and insert the tubes. And again, that's one of the advantages with this one. Putting these tubes in now yeah. that really are easy. There's, I mean, there's one, one good thing about this system is that, quite rightly, if we're working on a new build property, we don't have to install the tubes at that point. We can go back and install them later because we know new builds, um, social housing, you can get the kids coming round and throwing stuff at the tubes, collectors and breaking them. Whereas this one specifically, because of how we can install it, we can commission it, the plumbers can commission it on site, and then we can go back a few weeks later to put, all the, to put this in place right. in situ, which obviously protects the system while there's nobody watching after, looking after the properties. And Mark, can I just ask you, what about the roof pitch? How important is it, the, the pitch of the roof? The... The number of tubes to the demand and the roof pitch are things which are really dictated by the, 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 the end user's uh, profile of how they use their energy. So we would say a typical pitch is 0.7 multiplied by the latitude, but to make that simple, it's about a 35 to 40 degree pitch, which conveniently is what the standard sort of roof pitch is. If we were fitting a system for, let's say, a school, which has a, a more of a demand during the semester yeah. time than the, the summer time, you could elevate that to be a steeper pitch of maybe perhaps 45 degrees. And if you've got a flat roof, you could put an A-frame it or That's or right. Yeah. We have a couple of options with the flat roof. If you have a flat roof, we've got an A-frame, as you say, where we can then set a more accurate angle. And with larger systems, it's worth doing that because a few percent can mean several hundred or several thousand units. We also have uh, a unit separate from this one. It looks like the exact same tube, but it's actually called a direct flow, and it operates on a different principle where it's completely pumped. And that particular unit, you'll see on our stand, can be laid almost completely flat. Um, so that means that it minimizes wind loading, shading, also helps people with planning permission in sensitive areas and things like that. And one other thing to mention, the guys were saying about damage to, to collectors on the roof. The, I would honestly say you'd be very unfortunate if that happened. Footballs, golf balls, we've actually got some customers put videos online and things which you can see where they hit you know, balls or, or hurling balls at the tubes and they're actually very robust. They do have a European hail impact test which is not mandatory in Europe, it's, it's optional. We have had this for about six or seven years since it was introduced. It's now mandatory in Ireland, uh, which is useful because I'm based in, in Northern Ireland. And it became mandatory in Ireland, which helped us with one of the recent certifications in Ireland. Brilliant. So Chris, is that to do with speak? like the hailstone test? Yeah, yeah? that's so right. So if great big hailstones, yeah. ram on top of them, they're not going to shatter. That's right. The, yeah. the, the actual test is a 150 gram weight. So if you think of an iPhone 4, that's 134 grams. So it's more than 10% heavier than your iPhone. And it's dropped from about two and a half meters, which is probably the midpoint of where the television screen is to the, the floor where I'm standing. So that's the, all the tubes in the test have to withstand five impacts. Brilliant. Christopher, has anybody got an iPhone? I can throw it at them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right, so now we've got that in position. Obviously, we've got a plumber in here. Let's have a... Yeah, he's there. Right, so he's, he's now inside working on commissioning the system internally with the pipe work. 
So he needs to get his pipe work through this roof surface, through one of these solar deck um, lead weather slates, and onto the end of the manifold. So that's why we introduced this, if we can um, zoom into this. This is made of silicon, so it will reach high temperatures. So those of you that know solar thermal, they go way above 100 degree boiling point. They can go above 200 degrees. So this uh, weatherproof flashing here, the material it's made of needs to be able to go up to 250 degrees Celsius. So these solar deck lead slates are designed for that purpose. You can buy these in Plum Centre across the UK. Um, and this is the type of lead slate you need to use to get the pipe work from the manifold and through and into the plumber. Now, have we got, um, are we now going on to what happens inside? We are. Richard.